Well, good morning. Welcome to the Campground Gospel Hour. I'm Big D here along with Brother Danny, and we're going to be here for the next hour and a half playing some of the very best that we have in Southern Gospel music for you. We also uh, would like to tell you that it's rainy, uh, cool here at the radio station this morning, and we're here drinking hot coffee. We're going to be here with you, and uh, we'd love for you to stay with us for the next hour and a half for some of the uh, best gospel music that we have. You know, uh, we enjoyed Thanksgiving, and we're back now, and uh, uh, be doing our programs uh, weekly. You know, Danny, it won't be long till it'll be Christmas time, a season that we dearly love, because it reminds us of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So uh, we certainly celebrate that and have a great time with it. You know, up at Campground Baptist Church, who sponsors our program, and where I'm a member of that, Danny, they're going to be putting on the, the program up there. Uh, it's going to be five nights of the um, crucifixion of Christ, how he was born and brought through it, his life story. And we tell that each year there, and uh, we're certainly going to be giving you more facts on that. We'll be giving you the dates on it and uh, the times. So it's an outdoor amphitheater. Uh, oh, it's just beautiful how they've got it all fixed together. So we're going to uh, keep you informed on that. Proud you could join us this morning. Uh, we kind of missed being over here last week, didn't you, Dan? Yes, sir. And so it truly is good to be back in the studios. So now we want you to stay with us. And let's kick off, Danny, with another music, and then you come and bring us the message. Good morning, this is Brother Danny. It's Campground Gospel Hours Preaching Time. If you have an opportunity this morning would like to look at the Word of God with us this morning, we would love for you to do that. We're going to be looking at uh, this. I, I try to do this almost every year. Uh, I, I think about Christmas. I think as my part of my job, as well, our job as Christians, is that we need to keep Christ in Christmas. So I usually start somewhere around the first weekend of of the uh, month of December, I start trying to bring in some sort of a series of, of messages about Christmas and about Christ, and and uh, you know it, it has to. I believe that's what our our whole purpose is. You know, as Christians, as preachers, that's what we should do. And uh, so this morning, I want to keep into that that theme, so to speak. And I, I think I want to try to do a little bit different this year. I, if you were to look at the characters involved. In making this come together, I mean, outside of of our heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about characters, and, and maybe that's not. Maybe I should say subjects involved. You know, there are a number of key subjects, and 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 I figured the best way for us to start this off would be to start with the, his mother Mary, and and see what we see in that because that was a very very unusual. Uh, situation it, like none other. Let's just put it like the scripture said, like none other. That which was conceived in her was of the Holy Ghost. That's never been done before. It'll never be done again. And so we find that was the way that, that God made a way for salvation this morning. And so if we look at this, we want to look at, at how Mary praised the Lord with her, with her life and what she did. And so we're going to look in Luke chapter number 1. And, I mean, we could jump off in here and do a whole bunch of, of reading and stuff, but I want to key in on about two verses. But uh, we can start right here at, about in verse number 26, and I'll tell you where to jump to. And the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. So we, that's where we're establishing the point. And in verse number 31, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Verse 34, Then Mary said unto him, How shall this be, seeing that I know not a man? The angel answered, and the angel said, let me get my Bible turned. And said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and that with power of, of the highest, and shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now we're going to look down at verse number 46. 
And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of this handmaid, maiden, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to, to me great things, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arms. He hath scattered the proud in their imagination of their hearts. Verse number 46 and verses 47. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in my God and God my Savior. Heavenly Father, Lord, bless your word, Lord, as it goes forth this morning. Lord, help us to take just a few minutes, Lord, Lord, to look into your scripture, Lord, and see what you say about the Savior that came, Lord, that came through this virgin, Lord. And God, the things that, Lord, you did, Lord, that she pondered in her heart, God, what she did. God, I thank you, Lord, for doing that. I don't understand why you do it, Lord, but, Lord, I sure am amazed, and I thank you for it. Lord, there are some out there this morning, Lord, that might be lost and undone without you. Lord, we ask you to save them before it's too late. God, we ask you to encourage those that are discouraged. Lord, raise the sick, Lord, for your honor and glory. Lord, thank you, Lord, for this time. Lord, this radio station, the man of God that saw this, the church, Lord, that continues to provide this time. And those, our listeners, Lord, you bless now, Lord. We'll thank you and praise you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I thought about Mary this morning. I thought about that. That's one of the prime characters in you know in this. We could go back into the Old Testament probably before it's over with. We're going to visit the Book of Isaiah. I'm sure we might even by by quotation we might go back to Genesis and we might mention you know God making a way back in Genesis three and fifteen. But I thought this morning on the theme of Christmas that we are to look at Mary for a few minutes. I can I can say I don't as far as being pinpoint spot on. I would have to say that she was young. She was probably 16, 17. She could have been 18 years old. I would say she was probably a teenager. And and boy, when, when God met with her there and spoke to her through the, the angel Gabriel, it, she was overwhelmed by that. She was overwhelmed. How can this be, she said, seeing I know not a man. I've never been with a man. But God had a plan. I'm sure I'm glad that God has a plan. Boy, in our world today, God still has a plan. And boy, I tell you what, if we follow his plan, it'll work every time does work. And so we see that when God spoke to her and he told her these things, you know, here she is, she's down, you know, visiting her, her uh, Elizabeth. And the Bible said that there was uh, some things that took place there. When she, when she grabbed Elizabeth, the, the baby jumped in her womb because it was, you know, that was God's plan. So, but we don't want to get hung up there. Man, that excites me to know God had this thing worked out really good. But we want to have, we'll try to stop there and get back on Mary. I thought about, about Mary. Mary said right there in verse number 46 and 47, she said, I, I magnify the Lord. I magnify the Lord. I thought about what she was saying to herself. She was saying, my praise in, for God is internal. It comes from within the heart. It, it's, it was overwhelmed. She said, my soul. She talked about that. She said, my soul doth rejoice inside. That's internal. She, she was, her, her deepest feelings she voiced when she said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. I, I tell you what, she... It was not a surface praise. It was an internal praise. It was not an outside praise. It was an extra, I mean, an internal praise. She was so full of the exuberance that God had spoken to her that she was about to conceive. Uh, you know, it, it involved her will. The Bible said, and if you read on down, she said she was willing to do whatever the Lord had to do. She said she, she surrendered. So she willed that to, to the Lord. She willed her mind. Boy, that's hard to conceive in, your, in yourself. And it's a hard concept to even grasp that you're expecting, even though you've never been with a man. That's never been done. But she accepted that. She, she let her will. You know, she said, Lord, whatever you would have will of. And, and she, in her mind, that involved that internal praise, and involved her mind. She had to ponder some things in her heart that she could not speak to anyone. I imagine as this takes place, and I imagine as she sees him for the first time, and, and she watches him grow, that she ponders some things in her heart. She had to know, I mean, beyond all belief, she had to know that he was born to die, Big D. She had to know that. 
She had to know that he was there for a purpose, for God to speak to her and deal with her. You know, and so her praise was internal. It dealt with her emotions. She said, I give it all to you, God. My, my, my will, whatever you would have me to do, I'll do whatever you have to do. I tell you what, that speaks volumes to me today. Boy, when the Lord comes knocking on your door, you got to be willing to open up and let him in. You gotta, boy, you got to transform your mind. There's no way. God's ways are not our ways, and our ways are not God's ways. His ways are far higher than ours. And so if we could transform our mind and say, Lord, help me to think on like you would. I tell you what, things. I saw some things take place this week. Big D, that in the mind of a man, he would have done things differently. But boy, when he chill out and we say, Lord, what would you do? Boy, I tell you what, things change. You start thinking about what, what would Jesus actually do. You know, you start doing that. That was a great band that came out a while back that you wear around your wrist. And it said, what would Jesus do? And, man, if you really think about what would Jesus do, you have to give your will to him. Can't ask you a door you, Yeah, you have to give your mind to him and think like he does. And guess what you have to do? you got to give your emotions to him. Oh, he's not interested in your outside show of, of affection. He wants that heart. Amen. She pondered them in her heart. And she said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. And so for this reason, I tell you, I sure am glad that God came to her and spoke to her. I, I'm not saying that you know, God could have done anybody. But that what he chose was Mary for, for a purpose. I want to say that not only was her praise internal. She said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. But her praise was intense. She said the phrase, does magnify. That means I just like magnifying. Just a simple, simple thing. I found out by this, this little device right here. I found out that these things up here, even with these two eyeglasses upon my head, they sometimes fall short. But you know what I learned with this thing right here? I can take a photo and I can magnify it. I've, it pulls out serial numbers off of them laptops. It pulls off model numbers off of those parts and stuff. And so, you know what? I think that's exactly what she was doing. She was magnifying the Lord. How can you magnify the Lord who, who Big D, who, who lives in, in, who abides in the heavens? He looked at David and said, you plan to build me a house? He said, don't you know that even the heavens can't contain me? But here she was, ready to magnify him, make him bigger than life to the world around her. Mary had encountered his presence. You know, she had come face to face with the angel of the Lord who told her of the things that, that God would do. I tell you what, that speaks to me about salvation. Boy, I can't tell you what the Lord has done for me. I can speak from now on and it wouldn't be enough to tell you what he's done for me. You know, and so, so she said, my soul doth magnify. She said it magnifies the Lord. She had been in his presence. Big D, I can tell you the time and I can take you to the place. I can almost show you the pinpointed spot on that floor there in McHenry, Mississippi, where I met the Lord and I had a divine encounter with the Lord. And you know what? His presence became real to me that very night. I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's never been the same. I can tell you that Mary would never be the same. She met the Lord. She, she was in his presence. She felt his life-changing power. She felt that. She knew from this day forward. She said, the world will know. She went on down and she said, from every generation, from generation to generation, they'll know what the Lord has done here and what he's going to do with this child. I tell you what, your encounter with the Lord and, and you experience his presence, you'll never be the same. You could choose, I'll say, you could choose to get up and walk away. There have been some that have told their story that they rejected the Lord when he came knocking. And you know what? They, but they go, I know a man, I know a man that Big D, he was a deacon in a church. I can probably tell you the church and probably you know the man. And he ain't going to walk. He called my preacher and said, I need you to come talk to me. He had been a deacon for years. And he told my preacher this story. He said, I know when the Holy Ghost last dealt with me. And he said, I rejected him. And he said, I put on a front since then. My preacher said, but you're a deacon in the church. Brother, you can pray now. He said, no. He said, I'm telling you. I know when the Spirit said this is the last time. It does happen. It really does. The Bible said he will turn you over to your own devices. He'll let you 
You know why? Because that's your free will. That's your choice. Mary said she had been in the presence of the Lord. She had experienced his divine power. And, and you know what she decided to do? She decided, she decided to carry the message of the Lord. That old song said, Mary was the first one to carry the gospel. <laughs> I love that. And it's our choice. When he came knocking on that man's heart, he said, he said, no, sir, I'm not, I didn't do it. And so my preacher said, well, brother, we can pray now. He said, but you don't understand. He said, I know when he left. I tell you what, I want you to know this morning, Mary's praise was intense. She chose to magnify the Lord. Boy, if he's knocking on your heart today, it would do you good to open and let him in. I tell you what, and experience his presence like never before. Experience his power, that touch of the Lord. Boy, when he touches, it ain't the same from then on out. He touches a dead body and raises it to life. He touches the maimed and the halt and the blind and the feeble. And he touches them and makes them whole. He touches that life of a sinner. And you know what? They'll never be the same. And so she chose now. She chose that she has a message to carry. This is the Savior of the world. When we're talking about Mary, we think about she carried the Savior of the world. Boy, he is the gospel in person. We have this Bible I have in my hand, 66 books, and, and you know, many writers, you know, and, and many, many stories, and stories of those that were, that were mighty men of God. There were some that were mighty sinners that God touched and saved. There were common men, most of them were common men that God saved and touched, and he turned the world upside down, you know, because they had an encounter with him. Mary did. Mary said she chose to magnify the Lord. It's up to us this morning to, to meet him as our personal Savior and, 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 and carry the gospel to this lost and dying world. Boy, th this world is in need of saving this morning. Not only was her praise internal, her praise was intense, but it was also intentional. She said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. Mary's primary focus was on the Lord. No one else deserved it, but he did. Jesus, is he, he has no peer. He has no equal. He has no one that can even stand on the stage with him. He has none that can stand beside him. There is no equal. And so her praise was intentional. She acknowledged his uniqueness. When she said right here, she said, For he hath regarded the low estate of this handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. She exalted him. She lifted him high. She acknowledged his uniqueness. There is no other. She acknowledged his greatness. This world has never seen or ever will see another like the Lord Jesus. None as great as him. They said that, that, that you know, there, it, there was a song that came out a number of years ago. It said there have been armies that have been led by many. That all the armies of the world, all the nations that have ever, all the kings that have ever set sail, all the, everything. None have equaled this, this life of this solitary man, this one solitary man, the name of the Lord Jesus. And so she acknowledged his greatness. And you know what? No one else deserves his praise but him. We, we rob him of the greatest thing that we could ever do when we choose not to praise him. So not only was it internal, her praise was intense. Uh, it was intentional. It was on purpose. Sometimes, you know what? We just got to praise the Lord on purpose. We just got to do that. Come on. And so not only that, but it was also insightful. Later on in this, this, she declares, she said, For he who is mighty, right there in verse number 49, hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. It was insightful. I tell you what, he, this poor Jewish girl, God chose to use her. You know, and he chose to use her, and it was insightful. She said, she said that, you know, that she didn't deserve this. She, she said that she, he has chosen this low estate of this handmaiden who's not worthy. It's insightful, she said, but he's worthy. I tell you this morning, he's, he's worthy. I tell you what, he'll never choose another like that again. He'll never, he, he was chosen, he chose his avenue to get here. God met with her, 
She conceived. She bore the son. He lived his life for 33 and a half years approximately according to history. And he lived his life perfect and, and sinless. And he went about doing good. That's all what the scripture says. Said that he went around doing good. It said he grew with both, favor with both men and you know with others, his peers. And then there come a time when the tide of popular opinion changed on him. And you know what? They said crucify him. Mary saw all this. And she said this long before he ever, ever was to come to the cross that this world would know him from generation to generation that he has mercy on them. I'm thankful this morning that he came by way of Mary. I sure am glad this morning that he, he did this and he chose this. I sure am glad that he's given us an opportunity to share what he's done. I sure am glad, Big D, that he came to this world. This world knows him not. In First John it said this, he came into his world and this world knew him not. I sure am glad there are a few, though. I sure am glad that there are a few that know him. And, and, and you know what? They share his story. And they tell our story. Our story is his story. The time and the place when you trusted the Lord as your Savior, that's part of his story. I sure am glad of that. Boy, do you have a place, a time and a place that you accepted the Lord as your Savior. Boy, you ought to do that you had an encounter like Mary. That you met him like a personal encounter with him. Boy, it would do you good if you did that. Boy, I tell you what, things would be that'd be the best Christmas present you could ever have. Big D, you got something? Please explain to our listeners that Christmas is not material day. Jesus Christ is Christmas. Boy, without Christ, there is no Christmas. You pull his name out of it, and there you have nothing but a mess. <laughs> I mean, I mean a mess. <laughs> he, he, I tell you what, he is the reason that we're here this morning. He is the reason that we've got this Bible opened up and sharing the gospel. If you've never trusted the Lord as your Savior, you are to do it today before it is everlastingly too late. He's knocking on your heart. Somebody out there, he's knocking on your heart this morning. He's saying, please open and let me have in. He ha we'll have the best Christmas ever, I tell you. I promise you, he's doing that. Please trust him today before it's everlastingly too late. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you came into this world, Lord. God, I really, really don't understand why you'd trade places with me, Lord, but I know you did. There on Mount Calvary, you took my place, and I'm thankful for that. God, I love you. I ask you, Lord, to bless now, Lord, those that are there this morning that need a touch, those that need saving, Lord, those that need encouraging, Lord, that might need healing, Lord, you meet the need. God, we love you and we're thankful for you, Lord. We, Lord, we so carefully want to step out of the way and give you all the praise and honor and glory. Do what needs to be done, Lord, and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Our phone line is now open, 896-0454. This is Brother Danny, and this is Campground Gospel Hour on WGCM, AM, and FM now. If you have a, a, a request, a birthday or anniversary, a church announcement, 896 896- 0454. Thank you for being with us. Sure glad you were with us again this morning. Trust that maybe you've gotten something from the Lord. Uh, and come back and visit with us again. Lord bless you today. <laughs>